Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 7 of triple A and today's topic is quality management this topic is a must topic that you are going to get for your triple A exam any triple A exam has a question on quality okay but before I start this lecture guys there's a good news that I want to announce that I have got the latest the new textbook and the revision kit for AFM, SBL, SBR and AAA. Okay, so what you have to do is when you go to my channel, okay, Sabi Akhtar, you have to go to the uh, about section. There is an about section, right, where you can get my details. Then you will get the link there where it says ACCA materials. Okay, you have to click that link and then you can download whatever the books you need. All the books are there. The link is there now. So you can download from there. But uh, triple A textbook, I just still didn't receive the latest textbook. I'm still uh, using the old textbook. But the revision kit is there. The new revision kit is there. Okay. So please download it from there. And once I get the study text of triple A, I will be downloading it in that same link. Okay. So I will update you guys when I get the latest triple A textbook. Except triple A textbook, other books I've got. Let me repeat AFM, both textbook and revision kit are there the new one the latest one that is from september 2022 to june 2023 version afm is there sbr is there sbl is there only triple a revision kit is there but the textbook is not there okay so textbook i'm using the old one okay so let's start this uh, new lecture quality management okay here we are going to start with exam focus okay how this question will be asked in your exam what are the principles and the purpose of quality control? ISQC1, what is this? We'll see it later on what it stands for. Documentation. Just having a quality control in your audit environment is not enough. You have to document it. Approach to the exam questions. And then at the end of this video, we are going to do some questions on this quality control. So make sure that you watch this video till the end for the questions starting with exam focus okay from the exams point of view this is a very common requirement you will see in almost any triple a paper so how this question will be asked say this question will be asked in a way that they must have already given you some audit work done by some auditor what you have to do is you have to evaluate it okay about the performance of it is it good is it bad you have to just critically evaluate on the work already done okay and you have to identify whether the audit has been done with the required standard of quality that is required from the auditor or not. Is it up to the standard or not? You have to identify that. Then if the firm does not perform according to the high standard, okay, what does it mean? See, why quality is very important. First understand, if you do not perform the work with a high quality, you are going to increase the risk of issuing an inappropriate audit report. Why? Because there will be so many risks. If quality is suffering, risk will be high. Risk is high means you audit, you as an auditor is going to give an inappropriate report, which no one will like, right? We won't, we won't like it. Why? Because it will damage the reputation of the firm and the profession. So in order to avoid this, maintaining high quality at all stages of audit is a must. It is not your wish. It's a must. That's why this topic is very important. That's why this is a separate topic in your, your AAA syllabus. So don't neglect this. Now, what are the principles and the qualities of quality control? First understand, as an auditor, okay, they have responsibilities regarding quality control. And there are two professional standards. First understand which standards deal with quality control. There are two standards. Number one is ISQC1. This is our major standard which we are going to cover throughout this lecture okay this isqc1 means it's a quality control for firms that performs audit as well as other assurance and review services review of financial state not just audit of financial statements audit review assurance and related service engagements all this are done under isqc1 that means quality is maintained for all those things 
auditor financial statements, review of financial statements, other assurance, related service. Okay. The other standard is ISA 220. This is only the quality control for auditor financial statements. Here, the quality is only for the auditor financial statements. It does not include review. It does not include other assurance. It does not include related service. So you can see ISQC1 is the bigger one. It's like inside that only IS220 is there. And so that's why throughout this lecture, our focus will be on ISQC1. Okay, because IESA 220 is a part of ISQC1. Understanding? So our lecture will be focusing on ISQC1 as I told. Now, first understand why quality is important. Okay, the purpose of the assurance service is what? Why do we give assurance? This I started my lecture with this actually. My first lecture was this. Purpose of assurance service is what? To give assurance right to give assurance to the user or confidence to the user that whatever the subject matter okay regarding the subject matter they are giving the confidence so that users can make decisions okay to give that confidence to the user engagement has to be performed in a high quality in a satisfactory quality and if you are not able to maintain that quality you cannot give assurance also to the public and hence they are going to lose their trust in the profession not only that as an auditor you might have to face a negligence claim negligence claim might, might, uh, might be charged against you so in order to avoid all this in order to safeguard your profession in order to safeguard your reputation as an auditor you have to maintain high that's why quality is important okay if a professional negligence claim is made what happened what, what happened? The firm has followed suitable quality control. Let's say a professional negligence claim has been made against you. You an auditor, okay? You are an auditor. A negligence claim has been made against you. But you have already followed all the suitable quality control procedures. In that case, you can defend yourself. You can tell to the court that, listen, I have followed all the quality control procedure. After that, okay, if a negligence claim is made against you, you are you are the one the winning party the auditor is the one who is going to win this case because he can defend himself but imagine if you didn't have those quality control in the place in the first place how can you defend yourself you are going to lose the case that means you have to pay for the damages or the you have to compensate and not only monetary terms also it's a loss non-monetary loss also like reputation your reputation is going to suffer so that's why having quality control is a must in order to defend yourself also against any claim. So firm must work, perform work that complies with professional standard, any regulatory and legal requirements and issue the report, issue reports that are appropriate in the circumstances. Okay. Now, identify the six key principles isqc1 says it has six key principles what is it that means for the quality control these are the six key principles they identified what are they number one is leadership number two is ethics a firm should have a strong leadership they should be ethical they should have followed the quality control procedure while accepting and continuing with the client engagement performance they have to maintain the quality Human resource, when you're hiring the staff, firing the staff, managing the staff, monitoring. While you monitor also, you have to maintain control. So you have to maintain control in the six stages. Starting with leadership. Because everything starts from there. Leadership goes wrong, everything else goes wrong. You cannot be ethical. Then you are not going to follow quality in human resource, not monitoring. So leadership is a must. Starting with leadership. Leadership, ethics, acceptance, engagement, human resource and monitoring. Starting with leadership, what does it mean? This is in detail. That means you are promoting a culture in an organization that says quality is a must. It's an important thing. It, it, you cannot neglect quality. You have to inbuilt this in your culture. So for this, what should the management team do? Number one, 
they should establish procedure and policies to address performance evaluation how do you address performance of your staff how do you evaluate the performance of a staff you have to establish policies for that how do you compensate your staff you have to establish policies for that transparent and clear policies right how do you promote based on what next you have to ensure commercial consideration does not override quality yes you can think of profit you can think of money all the time but it should not override quality quality should be your number one priority third resources ensure that resources are sufficient to provide that quality control procedure coming to human resource human resource means how do you recruit when you recruit recruit high quality stuff why because if you are requiring not uh, if you are recruiting a staff which does not have the resources which does not have the skills which does not have the expertise remember you have to train them and who knows after you train they might go to the competitor also so make sure high quality high caliber staff you recruit then they should be competent enough if they are not competent they are going to make lots of mistakes hence your quality is going to suffer and also the cost will increase promotion in promotion also you have to maintain quality only you have to promote those people who are actually capable of being promoted not on you cannot be biased in that for example you are promoting your family members or people you know right quality is going to suffer compensation in compensation also quality has to be maintained performance evaluation it should not be biased objectively you have to evaluate the performance of the staff career development they should have a career development otherwise they will not stay in the organization estimation of personal needs okay so all this is in the human resource third engagement performance here you have to design policies that ensure that engagements are performed up to a satisfactory standard what are the policies they should cover these things number one consistency see when you are promoting uh, quality right when you are working for the quality of engagement make sure there is a consistency it should not be that one year there is quality second year the quality is not there third year no every year quality has to be maintained supervision responsibility the one who is supervised has to be someone senior has to be uh, has to have the caliber have to have enough expertise to supervise the juniors review even for the review someone external someone who can give objective decisions then so we are going to discuss this three points a b and c 3a consistency how do you do that through your policies you can show that you are promoting consistency right you can write a written manuals or some software tools or some standardized documentation could be there okay these are the matters that could be addressed like how engagement team are briefed to obtain an understanding of the engagement and their objective process for complying with engagement standards process for engagement supervision training and coaching how it is supervised how they will be trained how they will be coached all those things methods of reviewing work how your work will be reviewed it will be there how it will be judged and reports issued how it will be documented and the timing and the extent of the reviews and policies to sorry process to keep policies and procedures current obviously you cannot use outdated policies and procedures every time you have to update it supervision responsibility here you have to track the progress of the engagement second you have to see whether your team members have enough capabilities and competent they are competent enough they have to address significant matters that arise during the engagement okay identify difficult matters for consultation okay wherever see some consultation that is required some needs to be organized in advance to to facilitate a timely cost effective and completion of the engagement you cannot leave it for the last moment review responsibility here the one who are less experienced their work will be reviewed by one who is more experienced okay and what do they identify 
Number one, whether work has been done according to the professional standard. Number two, whether significant matters has been raised for further consideration. You just do not leave it ignored. Something has to be done with that significant matter. Third, whether consultation has taken place or not and conclusion has been reached and documented. Work performed, whatever the work that you have performed, does it support the conclusion that you have reached and you have documented? Evidence, whatever the evidence you have obtained, is it sufficient? Is it appropriate to support the report? All those things needs to be checked by the experienced team member, right? And the objectives of the engagement, has it been achieved or not? Then we have what is known as EQCR. What is it? Engagement Quality Control Review. Here, this provides an objective evaluation of the significant judgments made by the engagement team. See, engagement team will make some judgments. Some judgments are very significant, okay? So what does EQCR do? They see whether when you are making judgment also, are you making an objective evaluation or not? Not biased, objective. Sometimes this review is known as pre-issuance review or hot review. That means before issuing the audit report. Mostly, mostly this is done by listed entities who has high risk client. Okay. All the listed entities and high risk client have to do this engagement quality control review. Who are high risk clients? What do I mean by high risk client? High risk client are those client, okay, which are in the public interest. Okay. Public interest, unusual circumstances. Okay. And those where laws and regulations require, some laws and regulations says it requires engagement quality control review. For this, wherever you see this in an organization, that risk is, that client is risky for you. Understand this. That is a high risk client. Where it, it works for public interest, where unusual circumstances are there, risks are uncertain. Now, what should EQCR include? It should include, remember, you have to know all those things, what it includes. This should include number one, discussion of significant matter with the engagement partner. Number two, review of the financial statements and proposed report. Evaluation of the conclusion that has been reached for the report and consideration of the proposed report. Review of the selected engagement documentation. You cannot review all the documents, only some selected engagement documentation only. Especially relating to judgments, if you have made. For listed entities, okay, EQCR should consider this. The engagement teams, evaluation of the firm's independence. Where appropriate, sorry, whether appropriate consultation has taken place or not. Whether documentation selected for review work reflects the work performed in relation to judgments or not. Now, when you are evaluating significant judgment, what should EQCR do? They should consider significant risk and response to those risks. See, when you are evaluating significant judgment, okay, you have to see. Especially, it should consider those areas which are significant and the responses to those risks. Because that area only will have an impact. Where risks are significant and response to risk is also significant. Judgments with respect to materiality and significant risk. Significance of uncorrected misstatement. What is the significance? Sometimes it's minute, sometimes it's material. Any matter that needs to be communicated to the management and those start with governance or other bodies. Okay, all these things are there under EQC here. It will be considered. Now, next is eligibility criteria. See, for an engagement quality control reviewer, not anyone can be an engagement quality control reviewer, okay? They cannot come and see whether your engagement is done up to quality or not, or quality is maintained or not, no. Who are eligible for it? Number one, the one who has technical qualification to perform that role. They should have some kind of experience and authority to do this. Number two, objective. They should be objective. 
how do you maintain that objective see to be objective make sure that that reviewer whoever is going to review your engagement performance is not selected by the engagement partner and they should not participate in the engagement also then we are coming to the monitoring our quality control procedure and practices wait i think i yeah yeah i just so our quality control procedure and practice adequate you have to see that when you are monitoring also that also has to be of high quality that also has to be an educated way of monitoring you just cannot monitor any way you want some might not be an educated way of monitoring second is it relevant third is it operating effectively so this three questions one needs to ask now we are comparing between pre issuance and hot sorry post issuance that is known as cold review the purpose for pre issuance is to enhance the quality of assurance work here it is more like monitoring understanding to identify any deficiencies in the firm's process when before the auditor's report post issuance after the auditor's report which file here the file is for listed client public interest engagement engagements where there are particular risk and each partner should have some of their engagement reviewed coming to post issuance you just select a selection of completed engagement now we are not over yet who by so pre issuance is done by an independent partner that is suitable ex of suitable experience and authority post issuance is done by an dedicated sorry dedicated compliance or quality department right what is considered in hot review process undermining judgments for post it is like a review of all the working papers on an audit file specifically process about judgments what are the judge, uh, judgments about significant risk and responses matters requiring consultation materiality independence conclusions coming to post issuance okay our misstatement also audit opinion see all these areas only are the areas where judgments are required you require judgment or not in a misstatement you require in even in the audit report right so all this area are the area where judgments are required matters to be communicated with those charged with governance coming to post issuance here working papers will ensure what number 1 on file whether it is complete whether it is sign is completed whether it is evidence is reviewed whether working work undertaken is sufficient and has been documented appropriately outcomes what are the outcomes number 1 see the why do we do pre issuance review or hot review reason is to reduce the audit risk okay the risk that auditors expresses an inappropriate audit opinion here already things has been done you cannot reduce or prevent anything but you can identify corrective actions that should be taken and any recommendations will be like whatever you have found communicated add additional quality control review trained changes to the firm's policies and practices disciplinary action okay so this are the post issuance review will do now we are moving to documentation what do you document is 220 says that is quality control for an audit of financial statement okay that auditors require document in certain matter okay they require to document certain matter what is it number 1 issues with respect to ethical requirements and how they are resolved this needs to be documented what are your ethical requirements and how did you resolve it second conclusions on compliance with independence requirement when you are complying 
when you are saying that you are independent are you complying with are you complying with the rules conclusions reached about the acceptance and continuance of engagement how did you accept on what basis did you accept your client new client or on what basis did you continue with the new client has to be documented the nature the scope and the conclusions resulting from consultation now during completion of the audit the engagement quality control review has to document these things number 1 that the procedure required by the firm's engagement quality control procedure have been performed that means whoever came to review his procedure procedures are done okay quality control has been completed maybe on the date of the auditor's report or before it reviewer is not aware of any unresolved matters okay that would cause the reviewer to believe the significant judgment of the team were not appropriate no mostly we'll say our teams judgments are appropriate only now audit quality monitoring why you need to document all this thing see in uk this is an example okay in uk according to the monitoring visit that they have done during 2016 to 17 81% of audit were assessed as good or only requiring limited improvements compared with 77% in the prior prior year what are the five most common areas of concern when it comes to audit quality monitoring number 1 how do you monitor fair value and value in use measurement including impairment testing and property valuation these are difficult very difficult area challenging area number 2 revenue recognition this is a bit hard right third audit community uh, audit committee communication auditors report inaccuracies because if auditors report is inaccurate if revenue recognition has not been done properly there is no use of monitoring the quality is already bad independence and ethics so these are the five areas of concern now finally approach to exam question how do you approach to the exam question see to assess the quality of the audit you should consider factors like this number 1 this is from your exams point of view okay in your exam you have to write this in your answer to in order to say whether they are assessing the quality or not number 1 that you have to write is have iss been followed that is international standard of auditing has it been followed if yes quality is maintained if no quality is suffering okay usually it will be no when you have not obtained the appropriate and sufficient evidence in that case an inappropriate report will be issued second you have to see is as the work being allocated to appropriate level of staff or not not just of appropriate level of staff or not okay see which are the areas where most of the time you require judgment or it is subjective not all areas in uh, the standard i far as i as standard no only some like goodwill what is your work in progress what is the impairment fair value revenue recognition material estimate all this are subjective and judgmental area so in this area you have to make sure you have appropriate level of staff with good knowledge and skills okay that's why when you are auditing this area good will work in progress impairment where you know it's hard to monitor this has to be audited by the senior members who have experience also as well as professional judgment also you cannot hire juniors for this kind of work because they will they will they will apply less professional skepticism that means they will not challenge the senior people whatever the senior people is doing the way they are counting they will think the junior will think that's correct that's the norm that's the way the more senior you are the more experienced you are then only you become more experienced then only you can apply the professional skepticism then only you can challenge the views right a new employee might not be able to do it third as the audit being time pressured if the audit is time pressured remember quality will suffer as the appropriate type of evidence being obtained if no 
you have to you have to try for example see you just cannot rely on what someone says like written representation for the management or inquiry you just cannot you need other sources where you can collect the information okay as audit being performed in accordance with an audit plan you have to develop the audit plan okay according to the assess risk of material misstatement okay because if you are not following an order if you are not following a plan conclusion that you have reached will be inappropriate then as the audit being proper, properly supervised it has to be properly supervised on a timely basis right so that means all your issues has to be identified on a timely basis the competence of the team has to be assessed continually okay and so that the audit is on track to be completed on schedule okay the audit is on on track to be completed on schedule but if there is in inadequate supervision what happens let's say the supervisor is too busy or he has been absent during the audit or he has not visited the client for a while what happens quality will suffer again quality will suffer that's why you have to properly supervise the audit as the audit work being properly reviewed that has to be reviewed and this review is not yearly or quarterly or monthly it has to be done on a timely basis better the more regular it is the better it is so that you can make sure the work is performed up to good standard okay and make sure that review of work should not be done immediately it should be done shortly after the work has been completed not several weeks later okay and review should be done by someone senior because if an issue you have to discover it very early because if you discover the issues very late you will not get the sufficient time to address them also trust me now we'll be doing questions that's it for this lecture before we summarize the entire lecture test your understanding one so now we are going to do a question on quality the requirement is identify and comment on the implications of this findings for the company quality control policies and procedures for 15 marks okay you have to first identify and then you have to comment now i am going to teach you how to write an answer for triple a even though you must have known the answering pattern is same for any acca professional level paper okay but since triple a is purely you have to write okay calculations might be there but it's very less in terms of writing you have to write a lot compared to calculations and all okay so here you, you can see that they have six issues okay that you need to talk about but before that you have to read all this this is like a background to the case study so you are the manager responsible for the quality of the audit of the new client a firm of this one you are visiting the audit team at the head office which is a limited liability company the date is 1st of july 2005 the audit team comprises the audit supervisor the audit senior the trainees so they have given information of all the employees company provides food hygienic services which includes evaluation of risk of contamination carrying out bacteriological test and providing advice on health regulations and waste disposal okay Their principal customers include food processing companies, wholesale fresh food products, uh, fresh food markets like meat, fish, dairy product, and they have given you revenue, 19.8 for 2005 and 2004 they have given 13.8. You can see there is an increment of six million, and total asset was 6.1 before it was 4.2. That also increased. Now you have summarized the visits, findings of your visit, and the review of the audit working papers relating to the audit of the financial statements. So now we are going to go through each issue. Okay, so you first have to identify and comment regarding the quality control 
that means basically you have to identify what are the quality control policies and procedures in that company and then you have to comment okay first one against the analytical procedure section of the audit planning checklist Carl has written not applicable new client the audit planning checklist has not been signed off as being reviewed by author Arthur okay so when you write an answer for this first and foremost that you have to remember subheading you have to use a proper subheading okay so what could be the subheading for this it could be uh, an analytical procedure right because that is an issue so we'll write an answer i'm not writing a full-fledged answer for this the answers are there in your textbook right test understanding section at the end of the chapter you have the answer so you can read it on your own i'm just going to give you the points on how to approach a question like this okay so let's do that so first as okay I'm going to write here okay the first is analytical procedure AB this is will be your subheading now under this it's your wish how many paragraphs you want to write two paragraphs three paragraphs but obviously it will be more than one because it's for 15 marks you just not have to identify you have to identify and comment so at least two to three paragraphs you might require for this okay let's say three Okay, how do you how do you start this answer? Tell me. You have to tell the stage. Okay, number one, stage when audit sorry analytical procedure should be done. This is just the point I'm giving you. You have to explain in your own words. Okay which stage do we do analytical procedure that is the first paragraph you are going to write in first paragraph you're only going to write that okay so let me tell you that this is done at the planning stage okay the answer for this is planning stage why why do you do that so that it helps you to understand the business and identify areas of risk and the audit senior should know this okay because they told Carla has written not applicable for this new client analytical procedure was not applicable but you have to do this any company whenever you audit analytical procedure should be done at the planning stage remember that at planning stage why you have to do it tell me planning stage to help understand business and risk this is according to you can give the name of the standard also i say 350 what is i say 350 i know this might be a little bit too early but if you can uh, if you know then it's good this is identifying necessary risk or material in a statement through understanding entity and its environment okay the full uh, standard of IS 315 that is the name of the standard which I don't have to write just writing IS 315 is enough so in this case audit senior should know this thing because they told it's not applicable audit senior should know this that means you cannot write it's not applicable it is applicable to any form because it is done at the planning stage now second paragraph what do you do in the second paragraph link to the case study how you have to see whether in your case study is it uh, a risky company or whether the staff have sufficient knowledge or not see if you see this the case study what is it it is in the food processing company right health about health and food 
So what do you think? See, audit staff might have insufficient knowledge to assess risk. That is, the assess the risk of highly specialized service industry. Okay, in which this new client operates. If you see this new client operates where food processing companies. Okay, so if you see in this company, risk is very high. So your staff might not have sufficient knowledge to assess the risk of this company. Okay, I'm, I'm going to write the answer because this is about quality. Remember in quality, you have to talk about staff. Then uh, there are so many things, six principles, remember? Those six things you have to talk. Out of those six things, whatever is applicable to the case study, you have to say one is the human resource, that they should have the knowledge, expertise, experience. So audit staff may have insufficient knowledge. I'm not writing the full answer, I'm just writing the points. The rest you can fill fill in the blanks may have insufficient knowledge to assess the risk of this highly specialized service industry in which this new client operates so now you can tell what the risk this company might be exposed to the customer you have to name the company acnesl Company may be exposed to risk. What type of risk? They may be exposed to risk in unrecorded liabilities. They might not record the liabilities. For example, it could be actual or it could be contingent liability. Especially regarding contamination. Okay. See, because this is about food contamination, you have to take care of the hygienic of the food, right? If it is said, okay, or you are liable to any food contamination, claims will be made against the company, right? So that's the thing. Third paragraph. Second paragraph, basically, you're talking about the risk okay about the food contamination that if there's an outbreak of contamination you'll be facing risk you'll be liable for it so what are we talking in the third paragraph how do you end end this you have to say whether audit has been carried out effectively or not that is the whole purpose so in this case audit is not but it is not carried out effectively. This is what you have to explain in the third paragraph. You see here, they told the audit planning checklist has not been signed off, has been reviewed. But you have to do it, right? That's why it is not carried out effectively. You can say that audit was not planned adequately, okay? or maybe the audit work was commenced before the audit plan was reviewed by the audit supervisor so in this case finally you are going to conclude that audit is not being carried out effectively and efficiently you have to give a conclusion whether it is carried out effectively or not at every issue like this you have to talk you first have to identify then you have to talk about the risk then third paragraph is the conclusion now we are going to the second that is Let's see. Arthur is currently assigned to three other jobs and is working from the office. He last visited when the final audit commenced two weeks ago. In the meantime, Carla had completed the audit of non-current assets, including prop uh, property and service equipment, which amount to 1.1 million as of 31st March 2005 and 1.1 million in 2004 also. This is about supervising. So you can name it as uh, subheading could be supervisor's assignment.
No. You can see whenever they give you some number, better to work it in terms of percentage. Here they have given you some number, 1.1 million something. Right? Now, you have to calculate materiality. Whenever they give numbers means materiality. So if you see, okay, in the first paragraph you can write about the non-current asset. You have to say whether it's material or not. To understand that, just see what is the amount 1.1. Okay, and what is the total asset given to you in the beginning of the case study? Total asset was 6.1. So 1.1 out of 6.1. Find out how much 1.1 divided by 6.1 in terms into 100. Calculate in terms of percentage. is 18% okay and what about the trade receivable okay in the answer what they have done is they have uh, added both together they have taken this also trade receivable the third one and all has just finished sending out request for confirmation of trade receivable trade receivable amount is 3.5 and 1.6 you can even talk about that because here also Okay, we'll just find out that also because I think uh, okay for trade receivable also you can do the same way out of total assets you can find out that is 6.1 only trade receivable is how much 3.5 so 3.5 divided by 6.1 into 100 how much Fifty seven percent. Fifty seven percent. So if you have to, so now start comparing both. Okay. The work performed on non current asset is less material compared to trade receivable. So in this case, which what what appears to be less risky non-current asset or the trade receivable non-current asset because it is less material and also risk is less there because the carrying amount of the non-current asset is comparable with the previous year if you see non-current asset remain 1.1 1.1 only didn't change so much but trade receivable changed drastically okay so here non-current asset is less material than trade receivable this one was 18 percent whereas this one was 57 percent you can even write the percentage right you have to write the percentage to say that this is less material than this because you have to prove it in that paragraph only you can say that non-current asset is less risky because 1.1 figures did not change if you see here this year 1.1 last year also 1.1 for non-current asset but if you see trade receivable it was 1.6 and it increased by 3.5 which is not good it's not a good sign that means that is more risky trade receivable understanding it has it has doubled it has uh, more than doubled so you can write trade receivable from 1.6 to 3.5 more than doubled 
and if you see so in the second paragraph basically you have to talk about whether it was properly supervised or not because it is about supervise uh, supervisor's assignment they were supposed to supervise these two things did they did they do it properly or not so in this case audit is being inadequately supervised why because the work was delegated inappropriately you didn't delegate it to the right person so again this is like a conclusion like how you have done it for the first point that is for the analytical procedure same here audit is being in adequately supervised that means it was not supervised effectively why work was delegated inappropriately work was not delegated appropriately that's why quality suffered that's why you can supervise properly and if you see the form this form does not even have sufficient stuff from the case study itself you can make it out they did not have does not have efficient stuff or does not have sufficient audit stuff who has the relevant competences to supervise because remember to supervise also you need skills now third is about what is the same thing but you can write we can talk from the point of direct confirmation earlier we were just this one we just worked out for the materiality part okay because they both were being supervised but third point again we can mention from the point of confirmation so third one could be direct confirmation the subheading could be direct confirmation or just confirmation now here what do you write see when your trade receivers are material it is very usual it's very common that you are going to have direct confirmation this is the first method that you are going to apply right and it is reasonable also to expect customers to respond in this case but to understand this look at the date date is very important whether they are responding immediately or not this is 31st march okay and today is 1st of july 2005 so 3 months from march april may june 3 months went okay so 3 months after the statement of financial position if you see trade receivables is material because it is at 57% of the total assets so what does it mean that means direct confirmation is not working in this case because if it was working by 31st march you have sent out a direct confirmation then why is it even on 1st of july it is material that means you have to use alternative approach rather than direct confirmation right otherwise this figure would not be material link this to materiality second paragraph what is it you are giving alternative alternatives alternative suggestion if not direct confirmation then what else like you can say that they can test after date cash after what uh, what will this do this will provide evidence about the collective collectability of trade receivable the trade receivable you can collect and also it actually exist if you test your cash after the date you can see how much cash you are collecting and also that there is a trade receivable that exist 
or now you are giving a conclusion or is adequate or not inadequate inadequate audit so the supervision of the audit may be inadequate in this case also why how supervision can be inadequate if your audit trainee does not understand that there could be an alternative also to direct confirmation they just keep circulating 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 to the customer to directly confirm from them then this might not then the supervise the the supervision of the audit might be inadequate so you have to talk about that okay next fourth issue agnesos company's purchase clerk keeps 2500 cash to meet the sundry expenses okay the audit program shows that accounting is outstanding carl has explained that when gavin was sent to count it has reported back to us later that he had not done it he had not done it because it had not been convenient for jules gavin has instead been explaining to enroll how to extract samples using value weighted selection although jule had later announced that he was ready to have his cash counted kala decided to postpone until later in the audit this was not documented in the audit working papers as well so this is about cash counting so this one could be the subheading could be cash count now first identify always whenever amount is given first stage is to identify whether that amount is material or not in this case it's just 2500 so it, it's very material right 2500 is very immaterial isn't it even though this is a material still the client will expect it you to count you have to count it okay the client's management expect the auditor to count so that it has not been misappropriated so that it has not been wasted or stolen or anything you still have to count second second paragraph what should you write in second paragraph you have to talk about the trainee here the person who has been given the job to do it okay so you have to say whether it is inadequate or not in this case the briefing that is given to the trainee is may have been inadequate that is your point then you explain in the second paragraph why so you can talk about gavin and all they told that you see a long paragraph i can understand okay earlier gavin thought that you don't have to count and also you can see that gavin might not have understood why there is a need to count the cash at the time that request was made so you have to investigate the behavior of gavin why is he thinking so and you have to report it back to the audit senior well in this case he failed to report it back to the audit senior and also he was not supervised also he was left unsupervised understanding and in this case if you see the trainees they were not even given proper direction also that is the second issue no appropriate direction to trainees if you see they have not been given proper direction why how can you see this see gavin told that to use the sample selection method right if you see gavin here what did he say that rather than counting cash he was explaining to enroll how to extract sample using value weighted selection but why do we need it why do we need it he was not sufficiently competent enough to explain this 
to another training gavin if you see so that appears that trainees were not given appropriate direction and no documentation also was done for it so you have to talk about documentation the fourth para what can you talk in documentation think see you have to document whatever the decision is, why you you plan to delay the count of cash it has to be documented because the later the client might tell that you must have stolen the money or uh, there is no way of detecting so it's better to document even though it's impractical to document each and everything but in this case this needs to be documented why you plan to delay the count of cash whether because this will support Carla's decision if we document it okay then we are moving on to the fifth issue enroll has been assigned to the audit of the inventory which amounts to 150,000 and 90,000 so this is about inventory signet was not appointed as an auditor until after the year in physical count Errol has therefore carried out the test of control over purchase and issues to confirm the rollback of a sample of current quantities to quantities as of the year end count. First of all, understand about whether amount is given means materiality. Is it material? Just take 150,000 from the asset. 150,000 is your uh, inventory out of your total asset. What is your total asset? You need to go up. It is uh, 6.1 million. 6.1 million means 0 0.15 divided by 6.1. Tell me how much it will be. It will be around 2.5%. Is this material? So your first paragraph should be okay this is inventory is the subheading under this you have to talk about materiality first 2.5 percent is material because 2.5 percent of total assets okay this is material but if you see inventory is low risk why because company does not trade in inventory only consumers that is used in the supply of service in this case in this case in this company company to company this might differ whether inventory in that case is risky or not inventory is risky especially if you are dealing in inventory in huge quantity in this case you are not dealing in inventory you are dealing in consumables okay that is supply of service not in inventory so in this case it is less risky okay so in this case because it is less risky a junior employee like trainee can audit this so in this case it is appropriate that trainee can audit you don't need senior staff you only need senior staff to audit when that area is a risky area complex area and all in this case it is not complex and not risky also so trainee can audit but audit approach you have to see however the audit approach appears highly inefficient audit approach inefficient why if you see here what are they doing they are doing test of control over purchase and issues to confirm so they are doing what what are they doing here if you if you see they are doing in-depth testing they are doing test of control and all those things they are in depth you don't require all those things it is only for the high risk area so they are doing in-depth testing like test of control and detail is it required no because this is a low risk area you do not require test of control and all those things for low risk area 
okay so in this case looking at this you can say that audit was not appropriately planned so you can give as a conclusion in the second paragraph that inadequate was planned looking at this the next and the last issue Agnesel has drafted his first report to society which accounts health, safety and environmental performance data for the year 31st March. Carl has filled in with the comment that it is to be dealt with when all the other information for inclusion in the company's annual report is available. This will be a little uh, challenging for you to write. So you can write report to society as a subheading. What can you write in the first paragraph? You can directly talk about the comment. Start talking about the comment. Right? They told that they have to wait till they get all the information for the financial statements, annual report. So if you see the auditor's approach, the senior the auditor's approach is like this is like some other information. They are treating it as some other information. Right? Other information. So you can directly talk about the comment only. So if you see the comment, it ind indicates that Kala does not know what needs to be done with the report. Looks like Kala does not understand. And this could cause a problem. Okay, that means leaving it until the end of the audit, it could cause problem. Imagine if the audit firm is actually required to provide assurance on that. Assurance on the report to society. Okay, you are auditing financial statements. What if you have been asked to audit the report to society section also? You will have very less time at the end to do that if you leave it till the end. It's a risk. Right? So now, second paragraph is nothing but your conclusion. Whether it is adequate or not. So looking at this, it looks like company might lack resources and expertise that is necessary to provide assurance services for this case. Maybe they do not have the resource. Maybe they do not have expertise also that is required to give assurance. That's why they are taking it as other information to give it at the end. That could be a reason. Now, finally, okay. Even though this was not asked, but it's there in your answer. That is conclusion because they didn't ask this as a report or something. What can you write in conclusion? Conclusion is overall. If you see, this audit is not conducted in accordance with IS 315. Okay. So that's what. Now let us go to test to understanding too before we summarize this lecture. Test your understanding too. In test your understanding too, this is easier than the previous one. Here you are supposed to comment on the quality of the audit and describe recommendations that you would make to the firm's quality committee for 10 marks. Okay. So here you are a senior manager and a member of the team conducting cold reviews. Please understand what is cold review. That means after the audit report has been submitted you are currently reviewing the audit file a subsidy of a listed overseas parent which imports and distributes office furniture usually manufactured by the other group companies during the review you notice the following number one minutes of planning meeting are not are on file but were not signed by the partner the company's year end is 31st december field work was completed by 15th april and financial statements with the auditor's report were signed by 15 april the subsequent events checklist was completed on 15 April. 
company has very little headroom in its overdraft and apparently no other borrowing facility. There's a letter of support on file from holding company dated 15 April. Materiality is calculated as 60,000, which is in line with the firm's recommended procedure. The non-current asset consists of office furniture, office equipment, rackings, four lick rented warehouse for the rented warehouse. Carrying value is 250,000 and addition of the year of 40,000. Addition in the year, that means purchases. Copy invoices for all the additions are on file, but you find it difficult to see precisely what work was done. The working papers other than the pre-printed audit program and lead schedule have not been initialed or dated. Receivable circularization was successful and except for one non-reply that is for 40,000. So based on all these things you have to talk about the audit quality. So shall we do that? Now you have done the test understanding one you should be in a better position to answer this but remember whenever a question is given like this where they are giving you many where they have noticed different things in a review you cannot write it in one paragraph or you cannot write it you have to give a proper subheading for each understanding you have to identify what is the issue for example okay there are so many issues in this that you can find out one is regarding non-current asset the other one is regarding receivable the other one is reg regarding subsequent event okay that is even after the reporting date so let's talk about that okay one is planning number one is planning if you see here the minutes of the planning meeting are on file but were not signed by the partner so the first one is about planning meeting so let's answer this Remember, here you are doing a cold review. You are not going to uh, do a do it on the when you are planning. You are not doing it on the planning stage after the audit report has been signed off. Okay. First one is planning meeting. This is the first submitting. Under this, what can you write? That planning should be documented. Okay, it has to be documented and approved by partners. In this case, partners didn't sign it off, right? Before the start of field work, before you start your field work, this has to be done. Okay, so that means the partner have to sign off the minute meetings as soon as they are available. Next, going concern and subsequent event. Under this, you can write it in different paragraphs. First paragraph, what can you write? Any subsequent event review, okay, you have to look for this, you have to review it. You have to keep reviewing for any subsequent event. So subsequent event. Review. You have to review. It should be updated. Okay, so subsequent event review should be updated to the date of signing the auditor's report. You have to keep this and you have to update it until the auditor's report date. Okay. Next, what is the next? See here, okay. Yeah, there's a letter of support on 15 April from the holding company. This is also you can talk here. It's a subsequent event, right? All the subsequent event in one list, one it will come under this paragraph. Subheading, sorry. You can talk about that. See the comfort letter. 
you can talk about this just because parent is listed overseas does not mean that comfort letter is valid evidence that the cello companies are going concern just because your parent is listed on overseas does not mean you are going to be a going concern just because you have received a comfort letter then third what is it maybe again it's about comfort letter or you can write it in the same paragraph that maybe it means that the holding company is sufficient to eliminate the risk but then this should be made clear on the file and the checklist needs updating you have to update the checklist now the next is non current asset and a non current asset what can you write low risk non current asset in this case is low risk okay they might be considered low risk usually they are not so complex it's very easy to understand you can see whether you have purchased it or not you can see your cash book you can see the existence of non current asset so this is low risk but in terms of the amount total could total is material if you aggregate and see the total is material of non current asset even if the current year's addition may not be material if you see the current year's addition is just 60000 sorry uh current year's addition where is it it's just 40000 but if you see the carrying amount is 250000 if you add all materiality is at 60 anything above 60 is considered material and this year's addition is just 40000 even though addition is 40000 but overall it is material okay next you have to talk about the quality okay so in this case there's a lack of clarity lack of clarity in the approach for initiating and dating working papers if you see what are the basic procedure initiating and dating the working papers okay W W P stands for working papers. They have not been observed. Even if it's a low risk area, but it's even if this non current asset is low risk area, still the, you have to observe this thing. Receivable. Under receivable, what can you write? So if you see, they just told receivable circulation was successful except for one non-reply for forty thousand. Okay. So whatever this uncleared item, this forty thousand, we don't know the amount, material the amount we don't know. So we cannot say it is material or not. But still, you have to talk about materiality. Okay. Even we are not clear whether this material is material or not. or maybe let's say it's not material but it may be in excess of the tolerable error threshold could be next what is the next paragraph the moment you identify next paragraph is the quality issue that means you are giving recommendation one issue one recommendation one problem one recommendation second paragraph is always recommendation so the item should have been followed up and other evidence you have to obtain you have to follow up with this 40000 why you not receiving it you cannot sit with that leaving it like that item should be should have been followed this is the recommendation you are giving the item should have been followed and other evidence obtained and if this is not possible okay the potential misstatement should have been calculated in theoretical terms you still have to calculate at least what could be the misstatement so that you know what is the overall misstatement in the financial statement whether it's material or not next conclusions
so from all this thing basic conclusion and recommendation what can you understand overall first issue is okay there's a risk that the auditor's report is wrong why you might say that it is on a going concern basis but where is if you see all this um, going concern and subsequent event there might be risk so in this case there's a risk there's a risk that the auditor's report is wrong because of the going concern and receivable issues you have to give reasons also because receivable we don't know whether it's material or not so if it is material and you are saying you are giving an unmodified opinion then it's wrong no risk is there second planned training implications need to be considered training you have to train the staff who is reviewing it and third planned audit procedures like planning meeting subsequent event review non current asset working paper receivable sample all this needs to be planned so planned audit procedure like working paper non current asset receivable sample subsequent event review planning the meeting all this comes under plan audit procedure okay so that's it now let's summarize the whole lecture so here we started with quality control okay quality control one is for the accountancy firm where we went through isqc1 okay that covers everything then we have the engagement quality control procedures like we told that it needs to be consistent needs to be supervised properly and review there are two types of review whole hot and cold review hot is before the audit report is signed off and the cold is after the audit report is signed off okay so for quality control before i end i will take you back here don't forget the approach sorry approach to the exam question that is have is is being followed as the work being allocated to appropriate level of staff as the audit being time pressured as the appropriate type of evidence being obtained as the audit being performed in accordance with the audit plan all those things you need to answer we have just done two questions previously and you have seen that we have exactly what we have done is we have answered this questions only in the case study as the audit being properly supervised as the audit work paper being properly reviewed this is how you secure marks for this topic thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture and don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed to my channel and please share the link of this channel with your friends and before i leave hold on you can download all your acca materials that means your textbook and your revision kit the latest that is for september 2022 to june 2023 for afm sbr sbl and triple a you can download it on my channel go to my about section and the acca material just click on that and download whatever the books you need and to email me or to connect with me on social media you can go on the link given on my page that is again under about section click on the link and connect with me and you can ask me your doubts through email thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture